Hello everyone, for this problem, we're given an n by n chessboard as well as the starting row and column position of a knight. Assuming that the knight chooses any of its 8 moves uniformly at random, our goal is to find the probability that the knight is still on the chessboard after exactly k moves. Let's look at an example. Let's say we're given this as our example, n is 5, so we have a 5 by 5 chessboard. The chessboard is indexed by 0, so when r and c are 2, the knight starts off in the center of the board. k is 2, so the knight can make any combination of two consecutive moves. For the first move, the knight can move to any of the positions I have highlighted green. Since we weigh each of the 8 moves equally with probability, each square has a 1 8th probability that we land on it. Now since k is 2, we have to simulate this one more time. If k was 1 though, we'd return 1.0 because the current probability that the knight is on the chessboard is 100%. So now the knight could be on any one of these 8 squares. To simulate a second move, we start on any of these 8 squares and try to simulate the 8 moves. Let's start with this one here. Of the 8 possible moves, only 3 of them allow the knight to remain on the 5x5 grid these three that I've highlighted green. For each of these green squares, there is a 0 0.015 chance of being landed on because there is a 0.125 chance of the knight being on this position after the first move, and there is a 1 8th or 0.125 chance of going to each of the green squares after. So the 0.125 times 0.125 is 0 0.015625 for each of these squares. That was the first of the eight positions. Let's go to this one now. For this position, of the 8 moves the knight has, it can go to these 3 green ones and remain inbounds. Each of these spots has a 0 0.015 chance of the knight landing on it after 2 moves. However, notice for the center position, since there was already a 0 0.015 chance of landing on it, then the center piece now has 2 times that for 0 0.03125. If we were to repeat this process for the other 6 squares from the first iteration, these would be our final probabilities. Our original question was after the two moves, what is the probability that the knight is still on the 5x5 grid? So we just have to solve all these probabilities to get 0 0.3750, which is the answer we would return. Now that you hopefully have a better understanding of the problem, let's look at one possible solution using a graph approach. The graph solution is essentially a copy of the breadth first search algorithm in graphs. Let's look at the code. We have KP, which stands for knight probability. I've just hard coded this to be 1 8th to represent the 1 8th chance that the knight goes to any of the possible positions. We then initialize our queue and put on the first element. The first element in the queue is the starting position of the knight. The first two numbers are the row and column. The third number is the move that the knight is currently on. It starts at zero because the knight hasn't moved yet. The last number is the probability for that path. Right now it starts off as 1 or a 100% probability because it's guaranteed for the knight to be in the starting position before a move has taken place. The rest of the algorithm is pretty much a copy paste of the BFS algorithm for graphs. While there are elements on the queue, we pop the top element off. If the moves for this element is exactly k, it means we are at the end of the path, so we add the probability to our final prob variable. Final prob is the final answer which we're going to return and it represents the final probability of all the positions which are still on the board. In the else case, it means we aren't finished with the path yet, and there are still more moves to make. This means we try all the neighbors and append the ones that are still in bounds. I've moved the check for in bounds to a get neighbors function. Here's what that looks like. It just returns a list of the coordinates that are still in bounds based on the current position. For each of those coordinates, we append a new element on the queue and add one to the moves amount. This symbolizes us making one move with the knight. For the probability value, we multiply whatever the current probability is for that path by 1 8th because there is a 1 8th chance that based on this existing path, the knight will branch into this new position. And of course, once the queue is empty and the BFS finishes, we return the final accumulated probability. Now that you hopefully have a better understanding of the graph solution, let's take a look at the time and space complexity. For time we have 8 to the k. For each element on the queue, 8 more can be put on it. And for all 8 of these, 8 more can be put on. And this pattern continues on and on k times. So mathematically this is 8 times 8 times 8 k times, which is 8 to the k. 
Although we have the inbounds checked, which clips some of the branches, making the time complexity actually a little bit better than a to the k, it's still exponential and we're gonna wanna improve this. For space, we have the size of the q. As we just talked about in the time complexity, the q grows exponentially by adding eight more elements for each existing element on the q. Therefore, our space complexity is also eight to the k. As you've probably noticed, the graph solution is gonna be too slow. So let's explore a better solution which uses dynamic programming. The dynamic programming solution does something similar to what I was doing when I was explaining the problem at the beginning of this video. The DP table or the memo starts off with just the knight in the starting position. It then simulates the possible movements on each of the squares to represent us making one move of k. Let's take a look at a visual example before we look at the code. Let's look at this example where n is 5, k is 2, and the knight starts off in the top left corner. This is what our existing memo looks like to start. It's just the top left corner filled with a 1 because there is a 100% probability that the knight is in the top left corner to start off. Now we want to use this information in the existing memo to generate the next memo, and that represents us making one move with the knight. The way we can do this is we can iterate through the existing memo. For a particular spot, we can generate the probability that a knight arrives on this spot. Let's start off with this spot I've colored green. There are two possible positions where a knight can move into this green spot. I've highlighted these red. These two positions both have a zero probability of having a knight in the current memo, so this green spot gets a zero probability in the new memo. Now that we've determined the probability for this position, let's move on to the next one. For this spot, there are three positions where a knight can move into. Again, I've marked these red. Notice that in our existing memo, all these red positions have a probability of zero because there is a 0% chance that the knight is in any of these red spots. We continue this pattern, filling out the squares based on the probability that a knight could come from any of the positions and land on this position. And our probabilities are all zero until we arrive on this position here. For this position, there are six possible ways a knight can arrive on this square. I've colored them red. Notice that all these red squares have a probability of zero in the old memo, except for the top left one. This means that from the top left corner, there is a 0.125 probability that a knight can arrive on this square after one move. So in the next memo, we fill in this position with a 0.125 probability. We continue this process until the next memo is filled up. This next memo represents us taking the first move. To go from move one to move two, we would set next memo to our existing memo and repeat this process. Repeating this process would have us use the memo on the left, which is the one you just saw and represents the first move. We use the memo on the left to generate the memo on the right, which represents the probabilities for the next move, which is the second move. If k was larger, we would continue repeating this process, but since k is two, now all we have to do is sum up the values in our k equals two memo. This would give us 0 0.18750, which is the probability that the knight is still in the board, and this is the value we would return. Let's look at how we can implement this code now. Like last time, we have our knight probabilities. This is 1 8, but this time we're going to set up a memo, which is a n by n grid of zeros to start, except for the starting row and column. The starting in row and column is initialized to 1 because before the first move, there is a 100% probability that the knight is in that starting position. Now for k iterations, we're going to simulate what I just demonstrated with the visual. First, we set up our next memo, which represents us moving the knight and is going to replace our current memo at the end of the iteration. We iterate through each of the rows and columns. And for each of these positions, we look at all the possible positions that can reach this position. We can do this by leveraging the get neighbors function from our graph solution. For each of the neighbors that are in bounds, we take the neighbor's probability, multiply it by 1 8th, and add it to the existing probability in the new memo. Finally, when we're finished filling out the next memo, we set it to replace the existing memo for the next iteration. Once we've repeated this process k times, we total up the position's probabilities and return the final sum. That's it for the walkthrough of the algorithm. Now that you hopefully have a better understanding of it, let's analyze the time and space. For time, we have n squared times k. The n squared comes from the inner iterations over every position in our memo. These iterations occur k times. Thus, n squared k is our time complexity. For space, the extra space comes from the memos. 
we have our existing memo and our next or new memo, which simultaneously is two times n squared. And that just simplifies to n squared. Now that we've gone over the time and space, that's really it for this video. To recap, we went over two solutions, a slower solution, which involved BFS and a graph, and this faster solution, which uses dynamic programming. I hope you found this video somewhat useful. Thank you very much for watching, and good luck on all your interviews.